Good morning, traders, and welcome to the live trading webinar uh, today with Scott Pulsini. He's a futures trader, as you guys know. Uh, this is Bruce at Bookmap. Uh, the, um, this is our live um, advanced education that you get as a, uh, part of your subscription to Global Plus. We do, or Scott does this webinar every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, and it's going to be some live trading, taking some positions. It is in demo, paper trading mode. I'll go over that in just a second. Uh, just so that you guys understand, this is not a shadowing room. Like uh, This is about learning. Our, our whole education, this is what we have for Global Plus subscribers. You have the educational course. You have daily advanced webinars every weekday. Uh, and then two days a week, Wednesdays and Thursdays, you have professional traders trading live. You get the gamut of everything here. Uh, I, I, I really, I'm not really too sure how else to improve the education. Uh, um, if you have any suggestions, uh, let me know. Uh, I, I would love to uh, offer uh, something even better uh, if we can. Uh, anyway, uh, you're going to uh, see how Scott reads and trades order flow and how he optimizes entries and, and trade trade management here. Um, you guys all know who Scott is uh, and uh, the, the history he has um, and the trading the S&P E-mini, which is just pretty... Pretty incredible. It's uh, uh, you know, it's it's like a it's like a Hollywood story. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, here's Scott's um, contact information. I will be putting this into the chat. He does offer mentoring and education. You can reach out to him. He has an educational course uh, on the Bookmap Marketplace. He has a, a trading room here. His, his Twitter, his email, and his website. Okay. Uh, now let's go through this disclosure so you guys know what you're getting into. The general disclosure. Uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performances. Uh, we get pretty close to it because our simulator uh, it puts you in uh, in the queue uh, in the book, uh, so you will you will see slippage and you will have to wait uh, in the queue. Uh, but uh, still, uh, it's not uh, it's it's not a live order. Um, anyway, uh, risk disclosure: trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. With that, I'll turn it right over to Scott and we'll uh, jump right into the uh, live markets here. All right, do you hear me, Bruce? Yes, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, David is asking for uh, Kaylee to join. Uh, if we could get that, that'd be great. Uh, I don't know if she does uh, financial uh, uh, analysis. So did I hear you refer to my history as a Hollywood story? Is that what you said? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> it actually is because I mean, the ups and downs. They actually they could make a movie on it. It's, Pretty um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any documentary uh, film uh, makers out there? Uh, reach yeah. out to Scott. But the problem is my memory is so shot, like from the P PTSD from being a millionaire <laughs> to not. Oh, that that was uh, that was quite hard to to get over after years and years. You know, so there there was a lot of stressful events there. Thinking, you know, there's a saying out there. Um, Having money and then lost it is is um, way worse than never having money at all because you you know you kind of know the the lifestyle the feeling and you know when you start going downhill you you have your same type of uh, you know lifestyle and you, especially as a trader right you always think oh I'm going to figure it out I'm going to figure it out and you know when that scalping went away and the computers took over the algos took over it was like I was just rudderless and lost and again I mean most people know my story but I had to get out of trading. For a few years, and then um, you know, Dr. Brett Steenbarger introduced me to Bookmap, and the minute I saw it, I knew I was back. And again, it just keeps getting better and better and better. So, on my way back. So hopefully, this uh, Hollywood story will will end with a happy ending, million dollar <laughs> trader again. So, 
I'm on my way. I'm not there yet, but uh, I'm glad you guys are with me on the journey. You, you, guys you know, there, there. uh, there's there's another interesting. Uh, 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 a friend uh, sent me a, a link to a Bloomberg. Um, uh, it's like a 25 minute video uh, on that that trader in in uh, London that it was the finger pointed to him for the flash crash, which was, you know, ridiculous. But um, it, it, anyway, it has a similar story to yours, like uh, uh, how he, uh, um, you know, just was trading just massive volume in his parents' basement. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, just crazy, crazy story. Uh, uh, anyway, the, the, the amount of volume he's trading and his kind of like, uh, 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 shrewdness, um, uh, sobbiness with the uh, the markets was uh, very, very similar, I, I thought. Anyway, I'll try to dig it up and put it into the chat as well. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he get like banned or something or fined or something like that? He did. And then they, they actually went through it. It was interesting to see that uh, he um, was actually kind of let go because he didn't get a dime out of that. He, he made like, I don't know, 50 million bucks or something. And like he he uh, he he didn't even get it, um, and he helped you know the CFTC and uh, uh, how to uncover uh, traders that are um, you know doing disruptive uh, prohibitive practices like spoofing. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, that hasn't changed much. So <laughs> anyway, know. don't get me started on that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway. Uh, so looking at some of these markets, they're in some interesting uh, areas. Actually, I need to uh, remote to my other computer. Um, I got to do this, sorry. So, you know, again, you want to keep an eye on the spot gamma stuff because it's more and more the this stuff is just driving the market, the VIX. So this, these are the VIX futures. You want to always have this up if you're trading equities and see, you know, if we're making new highs, you want to see the VIX making new lows, um, you know, like, kind of like we're doing right now. You don't want to see, you'll notice, you know, like yesterday, we were trying to break out to the upside and VIX was kind of just sitting in the middle of its range. And then we would just reject, reject, reject uh, this is equities I'm talking about. So, um, you know, if you're if you're trying to play breakouts, you really want to make sure that VIX is, is in your favor. Um, but, you know, Spot Gamma is basically saying that, you know, the, the ranges are starting to get tighter because of these... Uh, you know, all the hedging by these options dealers with the futures and every time we rally, they're selling it here. You, know, you can, if you don't have spot gamma, I highly recommend it. I mean, I'm not affiliated with them except for using it, but uh, this stuff is more and more important every day from across the board from futures to stocks. So you want to, you want to know this stuff, but more importantly, you know, the way I use it is are the levels, right? So you can see these levels here and my cloud notes, you bring them in the real time, bring them in every day. And you know, the very important levels here where, dealers have to hedge their futures and again they act just like support and resistance levels because you know these dealers are going to be reacting here so so you know these are resistance levels and these are support right and then if they're broken then resistance becomes support it's just like anything else in trading so um but anyway he's talking more of a mean reverting type trade um to the to the high uh his high gamma levels so um let's see what he says here I know he said 39, so he's got the SPY. I don't have the SPY up right now on my book map um, just because I've been uh, having some issues with it. So I'm trying to get some things off of there. But uh, he basically says, what was I reading here? I saw something interesting earlier. Um, he's just basically saying lower volatility. So, but we are, we're in a, a breakout mode. And from what I look at, um, we'll go over that here. <clears throat> So I was waiting for this yesterday. Um, let's come over here. So if you guys saw yesterday, um, well, first of all, we're breaking out for you know anyone using market profile. So I use market profile, I use it in the very basic sense. I don't claim to be some raging expert on it, but I use it. You know, I. I will merge days that um, overlap. So the last two days here have overlapped down here, and that's what we've broken out of overnight. Um, you can see the dates here. So I'll just expand this to show you guys here in a second uh, for a second what, what I'm doing here. All right. So basically, if the um, you know, this is all basic stuff. I mean, I'm sure some people don't know about it, but you know, if your value area, so this is basically 66% of the trade. 
um, that's what these lines are drawn. And then the point of controls where the most trade occurred, right? So that's for yesterday, but this overlapped the day before by more than 50%. So when that happens, I'll merge the two days and I'll draw what they call a, com ice. a composite, um, a composite uh, value area, and that's that. And they're very powerful. So you can see overnight, we've broken out of this and we talked, and I'll, I'll go over what this was earlier. Um, I posted this on Twitter yesterday, but we broke out of here and now this is a prior one where we traded it through it a few times or well, at least up here, but it was still relevant. And now we've broken out of that one, right? So I'm not, I don't really want to chase this right here. Uh, if it pulls back here and I get a uh, buy signal with my real-time SI indicator volume, then I will buy this. Um, if we happen to break back inside, then I will, you know, I'll shorter for a move back down to this 3910 area. So the 3910 area was, um, actually, let me just, I just want to check out what happened in Russell there just to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, yeah, so that's thresholds. So Russell's thresholds for ice and stops are, uh, it's 150 for those of you that uh, don't have my course. Um, let's draw this in real quick. So this iceberg started right around here, sell ice and ending right about there. All right, so we're still in that zone. We'll keep an eye on that. Again, many times when you start hearing these, um, these thinner markets like Russell and Dow, when you start seeing things fire off in there, that signals a bigger move to come in all these uh, equities, uh, futures markets. So we'll keep an eye on this. Um, quickly this morning, you can see again, this SI indicator is if you guys do not have it, I mean, it's honestly the most powerful thing I've ever seen in futures trading, right? I've been trading for 22 years, 23 years, feels like 200 years, but um, it's, it's the, it's the most powerful thing I've ever seen. So this is basically showing you where, um, you know, the big money's plan, where they're taking stands. So this was a big, uh, I think it was close to 900 iceberg earlier by iceberg. Um, you can see here, let's see, I don't know why this is not. Yeah, for some reason, when I'm on the screen on this webcast, it's showing, you can see it down on the lower left there, but the, the float button is on another screen for some reason where it shows it. So this is 880 icebergs here you can see the concentrated volume here um 579 yeah i'm sorry scott so yeah it it's um aggregate that's why um so i already uh, let the team know about that so um that's why it's a little off um because it's aggregating it and then it just moves it over to an area so um and, and they're going to weight it um so that the aggregation will go to where that big spike is it'll still be off a little bit you're talking about the that iceberg on chart you're talking about this number here yeah. Yeah. No, I was just talking. Yeah, I mean, but I was talking. So when I hover nice. hover over this iceberg, usually you can, you can see a floating. And you can stop. It's on another screen, is what I'm saying. So you can't see the ice. the floating um the floating. Uh, let's see if it happens here. Yeah, see how you see the floating thing here when I'm showing the iceberg. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 uh, yeah, so it's showing on another screen. It's not a big deal. You can see it on the bottom lower left in my corner. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, this is a this is a big deal here um, for Nasdaq two. You can see here that you got this is um, one of my setups called double whammy. So let's see if this holds. I'm kind of jumping around here, but I don't know why the market didn't wait for me to explain everything I want to explain. That's not very nice. Um, so you have you see, you see here you have a stop run. It's usually the retail trader, that's the orange, into the, there's big buy ice coming in here trying to hold it up, right? So this is usually, this is, I mean, this is technically no a ice. long situation if this can hold, right? So let's hurry up and draw this in and then we'll discuss. So the top of this was right at the bottom of another iceberg from earlier. Oh, nice. I'll show you that as well. But you can see paper is definitely taking a stand here just like they were yesterday. Um, so these are two different areas. This one here, which we just broke, and then they came in and stepped in again. So that one, this top one was from here earlier. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, right here. So that was this one. You can see we held it and then ripped up higher. This is, you know, it doesn't look that much, but this was a 60 point move, right? And now we just ripped through that one, but now paper's stepping up again, and you had a stop run right into the waiting hands of paper. So this is a bullish signal if this can hold, which it is right now. So if this can get out of here, um, the only thing I don't like about this, this is not ideal as far as this prior iceberg has been broken, right? So 
Um, I mean, this obviously takes precedence. So if we can actually get up inside this, I think that'll be a nice long and you can put your stop down here. I mean, it's going to be, you got to risk about 35 points, but that's like a sneeze in NASDAQ lately. If anyone trades NASDAQ, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, again, we don't trade things in, I don't trade things in a vacuum, right? So let's quickly take a look at where we're at on these charts. Now, this is a perfect example of what I explain in my course, right? So that is a, technically a bullish signal, but do I want to be buying when we are below this balance that is built all night long and into the open? We couldn't get above the, the high and now we're breaking down. Do I want to be standing in front of all these traders that are holding this thing that are going to start to puke? This is not a good area to buy. Now, if we were to do something like this and then come back up and then break the high volume note of this balance area, which is where the most trade occurred, right? Then, then I get a signal, then I, I'll like the long. Right here, I do not take, I do not like the long. And that's why you guys do not trade, you know, again, if you have my course and you trade the setups, you do not want to be trading these setups in a vacuum. Again, if you take every single setup that occurs, across all the markets you watch, yes, you will be profitable. You can just take them blindly, but you, you can't do that by hand, right? If you have an algorithm, uh, you can automate it. That's one thing. But if you are, you know, only able to take and not catch every single one, then you got to be and look more at the longer term of trading, right, of the market. So, um, so we know we're below. Again, it's not to say we can't rip up, right? And if we do, that's fine. And, you know, I miss an opportunity, I guess, but I'm, again, I know what markets do and you do not want to be buying when it breaks down yes. below, right? So again, if we get up above here and above this zone, I'll show you this zone in a little bit what that is, then I'll, then I'll be a buyer. Um, so I'm just going to let this play out here and let's see what's going on in, in S&P. A lot of stuff firing off there. This was actually a good buy and I just missed it. Wow. All right, so you can see this was the big bias this morning. We broke away from it. This is what I was trying to show you when we did. So there's the floating window I was trying to show you that now distracting me away from this trade that's already seven points back. So this is a typical setup, right? Where you get the iceberg, it moves away, you get the retest, fail, out, gone, right? And then on top of that, now look at this ice coming in now. This is another thousand iceberg plus this one here, this was 600. So between this, this, and this, this is almost over 2000 icebergs. This was a awesome long right here. And I just missed it because I was screwing around with the NASDAQ. Um, so let's draw that, let's get this in here real quick. So this looks just like yesterday. There's just the, the bias just come, kept coming in, kept coming in, kept coming in. I'll show you that here in a second. I mean, that was the Twitter post I put. So this started coming in. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mark up this 300 because it's already it was already inside this zone. But um, this new one came in right around there, and it's carrying. It's still coming in right here. So you can see them these market orders trying to sell right here, right? And they're running right into a wall of hidden buy orders. So now this zone stretches from here to here. Right, so this was the earlier one, but then it came in again. I know it's, it looks a little confusing here. I'm, let me try to, uh, because this is so much bigger, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna make this a little thicker. Let's make this, uh, just so we can separate the zones. Did I already draw this other one? All right, so you can see that, I mean, this is this is a very important area. And what we did is we came down, we tested that iceberg, first iceberg, and then now new ice came in. If this starts to break away, this is going to be a long for me, um, especially because what I showed you here, right? Look what, look what we just did. So we came down. I was just talking about this. I cannot believe I just was distracted by the NASDAQ, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. We broke out of this value. We just came back, we retested it. That's where all that ice was. Ice came in again. Now we're moving higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, this is going to be more of a, um, I'm just going to get a full size here. 
So you can trade this one of two ways, right? You can trade this aggressively as it breaks out of the ice, or you can wait for it to move away, retest, and then go. But if you do that, then you're risking watching this thing just rip up higher and not coming back. Um, so I'm just going to get in here long, and then I'm going to put my uh, slip up here. I gotta just, this is a pretty big zone. So I'm, I'm going to risk down here. This thing shouldn't come back, but if it does, I'll uh, again, the way I trade is uh, if I get stopped out once. So for instance, if this does this here, right, if this comes back, stops me out and then breaks back above, I'll, I'll take, I'll give it one more shot, right? The other thing too, I posted this on Twitter today too, so I re retreated, someone posted the um, liquidity. Well, that was there earlier. There's, uh, there's definitely some at 40. So let's see, let's see where that was, liquidity was earlier. <clears throat> so this is pre-market, yeah, okay. So 36 and 40, that was pre-market and thanks to Jeff for posting that, that was kind of cool. Um, but anyway, yesterday, this is what I posted, right? These areas, I said, watch these areas. Um, can I find the ES? Here we go. So if we do happen to sell off, say this area fails, you definitely want to be watching this area. 07 down to 87. This is, there was thousands of icebergs in this area. And then we lifted off, and that's exactly what I said. Once we broke away, get ready for the big move away. And then you can see, look, look, yesterday liquidity was here as well. So this is probably exactly where we're going right now. Um, so that's going to be my first area that I'm going to watch if this thing get going. Um, if we can't, I want to see how it responds to this liquidity up here. Um, the other thing I want to see, this is what I want to see. I, I want to see this making lows, right? This is the VIX. I want to see this moving lower. If this keeps starts going like this, this is probably going to be a failed trade right now. So this has been driving everything lately. So again, you want to have this up. If you're going to take breakouts, I really want to see this make a new low, and then we're probably going to get the move in the ES to the, that 39.40 level. So, um, so you can see the difference here, right? So why am I? Why did I get long this, and I was I didn't want to get long this? Well, look at the difference, right? What do we just do? This looks completely opposite of NASDAQ. We had overnight balance, back and forth trade, right? Broke out, retested what? High volume node. That's where all the ice came in again. And now we now we moved higher. That's bullish. That is completely different look than the NASDAQ that we just were talking about. Find it. That's not it. Right? Look how this looks different. So instead, this is why I didn't get long NASDAQ on that double whammy. Again, it's, it might it might work, but I I look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture was we were breaking down. I'm not standing in front of a breakdown. Now, again, if we get above this high volume node and I start getting signals, then I'm going long NASDAQ as well. Right? But that's they, they look different. Look at how different these look. This broke out, retested the high volume node and held. This broke down. Right? So Right now, this is NASDAQ is still bearish comparatively because we're not getting through this high volume node yet. Right? If it gets above there, then I'm going long there too if I get a new signal. But that's why I didn't take the double whammy setup. And that's what I'm telling you guys. If you have the course and you know the setups, you can't take in the vacuum. You have to have some some semblance of the bigger picture, you know, even if it's on a five minute chart. So anyway, let's uh let's watch some paint try here for a while with this. Um the other market I'm watching, which I'm going to go along here, I've been waiting for this too, because uh, I missed this original. This was a double whammy as well. You see the stop run, 160 something uh, here, 199 stops into the waiting hands of almost 200, and it's like 160 something icebergs here. That was the zone I drew. It moved away. It just retested here. You can see it held it, moved back out. This is a good long. Um, again, not in a vacuum. I'm going to show you why I already know this, right? So this is what you guys need to be doing as traders before the market opens. You need to know where all your markets are as far as where, you know, where the big areas are. And, and then when you get the real-time volume supporting that area, it's go time, right? So this area, multiple reasons to be long, right? So you can see this zone here. 
what was the zone? The zone is where we broke down heart from here, where we retested, broke down heart from here. We finally got, tried to get above it. We built balance and then we broke out yesterday, or the last couple of days, right? So now what do we do? We retested this balance area, which is confluent with the zone. We got the double whammy. That's what I'm, that's why I'm long that. Um, and then the market profile, this is going. So hopefully I'll have this up when it, if it touches 39.40 so I can possibly scale out of some um, open up market profile. So market profile for gold is also bullish, right? So this is Taz. Taz are many market profiles. One of my, you know, I use this in conjunction with everything else. Very powerful. Um, second most powerful thing I've, I've used next to Bookmap. Um, so you can see we did break down from these. Uh, this is a 60 minute box. The boxes are like many market profiles. We broke down, but we held this prior one, right? Broke down. Um, we held where volume was, but more importantly, on the bigger picture, the bigger market profile stuff, you can see here again, value areas, merge value areas. What do we do? Didn't call it there. Came, came down, let's separate this. You can see that the other, actually it is separated. Um, came down, we held, oops, one second. We tried to break inside of this, this one here. Sorry, let me pull the days up so you can see. So this was the last two days merged, like I just showed you I did with the ES, right? They overlapped, that builds a powerful area. We tried to accept inside there, no dice. We got, I got that uh, signal, the double whammy, and then now we're back inside this one. So now the tendency is, especially because we didn't get to the high here, this held, now the tendency is to get to the other end of this, this market profile value area. So now I'm in, and if I get any new bullish signals, I will be adding all the way up, and then I'll be watching the 1736 area as one of my main targets, right? Um, and though that's confluent with, I'm sure, some of the TAS levels, right? So you can see here, that's right at the top of this box here as well. If we get back inside this box, right? Close to that too. You can see that, you can see the market profile, it overlays on this chart. I don't know why it doesn't overlay on my other charts. I gotta check that out, but everything's confluent guys. All this stuff works in tandem, right? So, but you need to know the bigger picture to be taking you know, your trades, All right? So this is slowly working out. Oh, let's see what NASDAQ did in that. I mean, it looks like that double whammy worked, which is great for the signals, right? But again, I didn't take it because the bigger picture told me I want to wait for it to get out of that area. You know, I have a basically a false breakdown, which would be, again, which we're real close to doing, right? False breakdowns are one of my favorite setups. False breakouts, I should say. Balance area, tried to break out, no dice. Now this is do or die right here. So it's either, if it's still gonna remain bearish, it's gonna, it has to hold this high volume node. High volume node is just the area where the most trade occurred in a balance area, right? It has to do this. If this gets above here, it's adios. And I'll be taking along. Uh, we didn't look at the market profile for that. I'll look at that quickly and then answer if there's any questions. Um, you can see here, doesn't look great yet because we're right in the middle to has boxes. You got the 30 minute box, you got the 60 minute box, but it is moving higher. And then market profile, Taz's market profile, just in a smaller scale, like I said, we're holding inside of, again, this isn't the best area to trade in this, right near the point of control, meaning that's where the most trade occurred. That's where you can expect to be getting whipsawed to death. You wanna be looking for edges, right? Kind of like that gold trade, I got long on the edge. Or if you wanna fade, you can fade on the edge or on breakouts, right? So I still take a long though based on that. Um, I just know that my odds of being whipsawed, if I do go long NASDAQ are much greater because we're right in the middle of this thing. And we're right near the point of control, which failed the first time down, first time up here, right? So if we do get go a little higher, we're going to be above the point of control and it's going to be probably a straight shot right to 3100 or 13100. All right, hopefully I slowed down there and guys can figure out what I was talking about. Um, I was jumping from market to market there. 
Um, any questions, Bruce? Um, let's see. Uh, not really. I've been answering a few um, about the new on chart indicator there. Um, so this is something you requested immediately, Scott, um, and finally we we delivered. Um, uh, so if anyone has any questions about that, I, I sent uh, the link in there to the um, well in the in the uh, questions. There's a link to the um, uh, knowledge base uh, article on it. In the download and everything else is there as well. Um, so it verifies exactly where these icebergs are uh, transacting. Um, it's pretty. It is pretty cool. It as you guys probably know, unless you hadn't seen it yet, um, it, it it shows you. Uh, not only like where exactly they're transacting, but uh, is it still open? Uh, is it is it still there? Uh, has it been moved? Has it been canceled? Or did it fully execute? Which is pretty pretty cool uh, to be able to see all those details uh, right on the chart, uh, so you know where that's happening. Um, and uh, let's see, no questions here though, Scott, um, in particular. Um, no. Yeah, you can no, see here. It's like, pretty quiet. You see these two cell bubbles earlier you can see a thousand of those icebergs fired off right in these you can see them trying to sell it and they ran in the 555 555 right yeah i'm just i'm fascinated by this like uh, and you can zoom in and see all of it like uh, uh and see at the end if it was canceled or um executed uh, as well right I, I don't so i don't have cancel just because there's too much stuff on my chart too much is. stuff yeah i mean I, it, it you, won't it won't show it won't show until um you zoom in really uh to be honest so uh okay. it just aggregates on the uh on the overall so you won't okay. see it unless yeah. it's unless it's like you, you <laughs> may it may show up but most likely it'll be just like what you see right here right yeah, yeah see, this one, see this one specific prices right it, yeah, and then um, you keep on zooming in there, and you'll, you'll see it. But uh, that's okay; you don't have to <laughs> zoom into the nanosecond uh, uh, level. Which is good to know the exact prices of where these fired off, especially yeah. if you want to control your risk a little better, right? So another big fallacy of traders is, you know, I I, I want to when I put on a trade, I put a bracket order, and I'm just two points. Well, okay, what's the two points? Is it just in a random area? Like it doesn't matter. The market doesn't care where your two point stop is. Right, you need to be basing your stops on structure, not on just because you don't want to lose a certain amount of money. Because you will lose a certain amount of money if there's nothing relevant there, because that's what the algos do. They're there to whipsaw the market and stop out people. Right. So again, if you know these exact prices in this inside this iceberg, right, you can so you can see that you know that 555 happened here and here, right around 24, 75, 25, and I I put my stop right below that. So that's a, you know again if that comes back and penetrates that area. That's no no bueno, right? So it's like I'll there you go. I put it just below there. But you can really pinpoint your prices, you know, of where you can put your stops instead of these huge zones, you know, a lot yeah. of time. Yeah, I still like yeah. the zones because you see that, all the experts coming in, but um, you can really pinpoint this point. And again, I, I'm brand new to this. I mean, some of these guys have been using this longer than me. I just came out beta the last uh, couple of weeks ago, but um, I'm seeing great things with it. So. Um, so we're watching paint dry in ES as usual. Uh, <laughs> um, I shouldn't say as usual, it's been actually kind of crazy. The last couple of days has been um, um, kind of slow, but last week was nuts. Like Thursday and Friday, the thing was just it was head spinning. Um, so again, this is what you want to see, what's going to cause concern. And I, I'm not going to just trade specifically off of this, but if this thing starts to rally, we're probably going to not, not go up to this 40 right now, right? So you just want to keep an eye on that. Again, I don't trade off of this, but if I were entering trades and I see this, vi the VIX is like in the middle of this range and I and I want to play a breakout, I may I may give it a second thought, right? You want to see the thing making lows as, as you're playing breakout trades, things like that. So, and it's 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 behaving okay as of right now, so we'll see. Yeah, this, this looks really nice, uh, really poised here to, to trade up to that 40 level. Right, and again, you know, for the newer uh, people out there, this liquidity acts as magnets. It's not the opposite. So again, most people would say, "Wow, look at that side." He stops. There you go. I might add to this. Um, we're gonna stop run here. Again, stop runs are usually I call them the dumb money, but if it holds, that means it, it's holding, and then the big money comes in behind it and, and holds it in that area, right? If this doesn't hold, so now this is a perfect opportunity to trail my stop, 
right? So again, that's another fallacy of traders just trailing their stop because they're watching their P&L and they don't want to lose this month's rent, you know, for instance. So here we go. This is well over, this is 763 stop run. Let's mark that up quickly from there. Uh, we will have a on chart stop uh, indicator as well soon. Um, we're starting with the icebergs. Guys, I'll answer your questions about the colors, et cetera. Like a lot of your suggestions are already in the works. Um, so, uh, and you can also change the colors. So, you know, you can do whatever you want um, uh, with those. Uh, we made them all blue. It, it makes sense to me that if it's above the market, uh, you know, it's a sell iceberg. If it's below the market, it is a buy iceberg. But the it's a blue line because it's iceberg. That's why. You can change it if you want. You you have the color uh, options there. All right. So I'm going to keep this pretty close to the zone because this thing should go. Um, you know, again, with heightened volatility, you know, this is a zone and this is where this fired off. But it's also a zone. They're not exact prices. So especially when we get more volatile, you know, and you've guys seen this live many times where I'm putting my stop right outside the zone. It comes and stops me and then it goes. Um, but I'm going to put this right below the zone and this is a way this is my i'm stopping out of this six lot this will guarantee me some profit and again now i'm canceling this and i'm not basing this stop on because i don't want to lose all my profit i'm basing because this is a brand new signal it's about to be an ad if this can get above here but even if it's not if this holds and it comes down this would be a dumb this would be a dumb and dumber which is a bearish setup if it goes like this and but i'm out and i'm out based on what's really happening in the market not because i i don't want to lose my money right? That's why we talk about all the time. You shouldn't even have this up if possible. If you can, if you can put it, even go old school and put a piece of tape over your P&L and just trade. Because if you're looking at your P&L, you, you go back to human nature. Trading is the opposite of human nature. That's why it's so hard. So when you're watching your money disappear, you're of course going to want to get out of the trade, right? That's why you just need to learn how to trade the structure and trade structure and then know where to get in, where to get out, let me give this a shot on the um, buy side here. Give it a second. Uh, I might, I'm, meaning I'm going to add to it. Um, so you can see this is turning into possibly a stop and hold. Stop and hold, one of the five setups. Stop run, holding, then the big money comes in behind it and pushes it, and then probably going right to 39.40. My only worry is, again, I don't want it to, I don't like only risking, I don't want to risk four points to make four points, right? I'm, I don't want this to stop at 39.40 is what I'm saying, but I'll still, you know, the pattern's the pattern, the setup's the setup. So I will add to this. If this can move a little higher, I'm gonna get in and then I'm gonna add to the trade. If it doesn't, I'm gonna stop out. I'll make a small, I'll take a small winner and I'll wait for my next setup, right? So it's not this wishing like, oh, please don't come back. You know, it's like I'm basing it off of what happened in the market. Um, so the other thing we want to be looking at is the VIX we just talked about, right? There you go. It's making lows. Made a low on that stop run. So let's see what happens here. Starts moving higher. I want to have the VIX up because I want to make sure it's on its lows and then I will definitely add to it. So I'm just going to stop into this. So I don't miss it like I always do when I'm on these webinars. Um, again, if I get filled on that, the stop's going to go in the same spot. So I'm, I'll have two positions on. If it comes back, then you know I'll, I'll lose on this one. I'll make a little on this one, and I'll just wait for my next setup. The whole idea of trading, guys, it's not to you know there's this fallacy out there that you're going to make money every single day like a normal job. It's not a normal job. Your goal is to kind of tread water, make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, right? And then the days that you catch the trending market is the day that you make your month and your year, right? So if this works out properly, you know, if say I get filled on this and it comes back and stops me out, big deal. I, I'll, I'll be down maybe a couple hundred bucks, right? But if this works and this turns into a trending day that trends up 50 points and I keep getting bullish signals and I keep adding new positions based on the new setups, all of a sudden I'm going to have, you know, five times five, my size on, right? So I'm going to have, um, there, I just got filled on that. So me uh, put this stop in here. So now I'm stopping out of both positions. Let's do that. There we go. So again, there's my MO, by the way, stopped, stopped into the tech, but whatever. If this comes back, it comes back. But again, if this thing starts to take off, I'm going to have multiple positions on and I'm going to have a month making day, right? 
see what happens here with the VIX. I, I want this VIX to start moving lower and we should get the pop to 39.40. Again, this is all based on structure. This isn't just random, hey, I want to add to this trade. This is a bullish setup. Again, I got filled to the exact tick, but I could have probably put it a little higher just to make sure, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I don't see any warning signs, so I'm fine with getting in right there. I just, just for my own mental well being, I just, I need it to get, there you go. I just don't, I can't tell you how many, we talk about this on the webinars all the time. I get filled to the tick literally eight times a day. It's insanity. And I know there's guys out there like cry me a river, but it, I'm convinced it's my curse for making so much money in the past in these in this, these markets that I now I have to endure these stops to the ticks five times a day. There you go. There's the move. Now I'm watching 40. If it can't get through 40, I'm going to get out of a quarter of my of my position. That's my rules, right? Those are my rules, I should say. So let's see if this gets up here. The other thing you want to be cognizant of, there's always um, front running algos. They see this size in here too. And as it gets close to like run it away, if I start to see red bubbles come in, I'm just going to get out of a quarter here. <clears throat> it's not quite at 40, but again, I'm watching these red bubbles to see what I'll do here. So I'm going to get out of a quarter here. And what, because what happens a lot of times, one, the front run, you get the algos that see the same thing we see, right? And they front run it. But what may happen here is it'll come here, it'll retest, and it'll break out. I'll probably put that quarter back on, right? Because many times, if you miss the original trade, you'll get another chance. It'll come back kind of like that gold trade I just showed you, right? That was over like an hour, you know, it retested that area, right? So we broke out of it. You get this all the time. This was the broke out. Came back, retested, failed, and that's why I got in here. I, I got another chance at it because I missed the first one. Many times you'll get another chance. Sometimes you won't, right? So again, if you miss it, so I'm going to watch what happens here. Let me change the quantity here to eight. Oops. What am I doing here? There we go. All right. So if this comes back here like this and then hold and I start to see blue bubbles, I'll, I'm going to put that four lot back on and then see if we can get finally get up to 40. But this is exactly what happens, guys. This is, see that the whole, the whole idea here is to understand what, how these markets work, right? Instead of panicking out of this, you know, out of the entire position, because it, you know, say everyone got along with me and they're all looking at 40 and it starts to run away. They're like, oh no, my problem is disappearing. You got to know the first time near this liquidity, these computers, these algos see this size and they'll run it away because they want the size to chase it, to get out, right? So you should know, hey, this has got a chance the first time to run away from it. You know, and you can decide, like I decided, hey, I'm going to get out of a quarter there. I was hoping maybe for a return. We, we still might get it, but it may not. And then again, if this comes up here and it struggles, I'll get out of another quarter. And then I'm going to leave the rest on until I get a bearish setup to cover my position. Doesn't mean I'm going to go short. It means I'm going to just cover the rest of my position. I don't want to be short this market based on everything that we've talked about, right? Again, we broke out of this value area. We retested, held, all that ice came in, gone. This is a bullish market. I do not want to short this market. All right, so let's see what happens here at. Um, at 40. So again, you don't just, you know, if this comes up here and all you see is blue bubbles, there's no reason to get out. You don't want to get out if no one else is getting selling, right? If you just see blue, 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 blue right through it, hold on to it. If it comes up here and you see blue, blue and it kind of, you know, stalls and then you start to see red, then, then I'm going to get out of another quarter, right? So here we go. Let's see what happens. Look at the VIX confirming. That's good. I want to see this blow right through. It should blow right through it. We'll see. Scott, you're using still the 3.0 um, iceberg uh, in the sub chart. Yeah, so I'm in direct contact with the developers, as you know, Bruce, and they, um, you know, there's still a couple bugs. It that, stops. Okay, let me watch this first. There's still a couple bugs in the um, the newer versions, like the 3.14, as far yeah. as giving alerts. So he told me it should be finished. They should have it fixed by the end of this week, and he's going to let me know. Um, when that happens. So okay. I'll probably even post on Twitter uh, when he gives me the green light, just so you guys know that you can switch to the 3.14. But yeah, I'm on cool. uh, I'm on 3.3.0. And again, if you need that, you can contact. If you don't have that download, you can contact us, 
support at bookmap.com or you can email me and I, I have that I can share on a Google, uh, Google Drive. I have it and I can share it with you. All right, so we're kind of struggling here at this. Um, so if I start seeing red, I'm just going to get out of another four. I just, this should be blowing through here is what should happen. Let me see. Half of a second here. All right, so I'm out. I'm just going to get four on right now. Again, the thing is, if it blows through this 39.40, we're probably going to need another bullish signal, and I, I can put a brand new position on, right? But I don't want to be holding trades if it can't get through here, right? Now it probably will, but that's fine. That's the way I trade, right? And again, I'm, you're going to get another opportunity, right? To get long is what I'm saying. Let's change this here. Do that every time. This is just a really, really nice read, Scott higher oh, time frame and then you're waiting for this to it just panned out just like you said right exactly if you know exactly you know where we're at on the charts longer term and then you get your confirming volume that it's go time right your odds again you're not gonna be right i'm not right every time as you guys seen but i'm right more often than i'm wrong and then when i'm right i, I take multiples on my trade meaning i'm risking four to make 15 four to make 20 right this particular trade i didn't you know it wasn't four to make 20 but you got to respect what the market's giving you right now there should be a stop run. Let's see if it fires off. Again, if this fails here, I'm not gonna get out of any more because I already got out here. Um, the last four, I will hold until I see a bearish setup, right? Then I'll cover it completely because the volume is telling me, hey, this is not the time. And then I'll wait, I'll wait to get back in bullish. I'm not going short this market though, right? Again, another fallacy of traders, trying to catch every single move that happens, trying to be long and then when it rejects they want to be short and they want to be long you guys you can't you're not going to be able to do it right possibly if you can write programs maybe you know by hand you have to try to come up with a thesis every day looking at the charts kind of like we went over with the market profile and the bigger picture stuff come up with your thesis wait for your confirming volume and then you put on your trade but i'm not trying to catch every every move all directions it's just not going to happen you're going to drive yourself crazy trust me Gold's working out too, slightly. Again, I will add all of these. If I start getting more signals, kind of like added to yes, I will definitely add to gold. That looks very bullish to me right now too. Um, so NASDAQ is go time too. If I start seeing what happened here, this is a fail breakdown, one of my favorite trades. We've already talked about this, but tried to break down, no dice, got above the high volume node. Now it's go time. So I will add to that. There's probably been something firing off there too that I missed, I'm sure. Let's see. Hey, look at I wonder where we're going. I'll get anyone know where we're going here? Where do you think Nasdaq's going? I'll give you one guess. Yeah, this is options dealers, but trust me, this is going to that liquidity. It's amazing. Like when you really start to watch this, it is it is just absolute magnets. The big money gets what they want all the time. At all times, I should say. So this is exactly, actually, I might still be able to get in this long here. This is a stop. It looks like it's going to be a stop and hold, right? So the stop run started. Let's see, right, right about here. So usually you'll see the, the bubbles come in a little before you see this. So that's why you want to do this. Let's see here. See how this bubble started a little bit before the line? But you can see this was the stop run, right? So let's draw that. It's the wrong drawer here. Say to there, I'm gonna change that color too so people are not confused. I try to use the same colors as the iceberg indicator. All right, let's change this color. I think that's orange-ish or red. I'm colorblind, so apologies. That looks a little better. All right, so let's see. All right, so this was actually a dumb and dumber. So if you were long there, this gives you an opportunity to cover your trade and then wait for your next setup, right? Meaning you had the big stop run, 200, that's the zone, and it immediately failed. This was opposite of what the ES did, right? Boom, ES held and, and moving higher. 
and moved higher to 40, right? So again, when, if you're long, that doesn't mean this can't rip through now, but you would, you know, again, guys that love to get out of their trade because they don't want to see their profit, this says, hey, lighten up or get out of your trade, right? If you were long from down here and you didn't see this, you don't ignore this. It's the minute it violates the zone, you get out, right? And you save yourself, you know, this is this moved down 11 points, right? And you can see now it's struggling. So I, if I was long, I would have been out right here because this is a bearish setup. Doesn't mean I'm going short, but now I get out and I just wait for my next bullish setup. Again, you have to you have to respect what the market's telling you. You can't just ignore that this happened because you want the thing to go to liquidity. Do I think this is going to this liquidity? Almost 100%. Is it doesn't mean it has to happen right this second? Absolutely not. I will get out and then I will wait and hopefully it'll pull back, right? Because I already know we're bullish based on that failed breakout. I will look for a pullback and then like right now, look what's coming in, Here comes the ice. That's gonna give you another chance to, to get long. And you don't have to endure this pullback because this told you to get out. Guys, when you start to realize and read real-time volume, it's gonna make your trading, you're gonna to go to a whole nother level. Cause you're not so, the main thing is you're not so discombobulated and, and confused by the market action. If you're looking at a bar chart, you tell me how you know anything based on this. But again, this looks bullish, but all right, so all the guys that are bullish, so the guys that got in right here, like, okay, yeah, we cleared these highs from overnight. Yeah, I'm long. Oh, wait, what? Why, why is this doing this, right? They're all confused. They hate the NASDAQ, and NASDAQ's a dumb market. If you have this, you know exactly why it did that, because of this stop run that didn't hold, a dumb and dumber. The dumb money puked. Again, retail traders, again, I'm a retail trader, don't take offense. It just means we don't know as much as the, the big money does, right? So the retail trader pukes, fails, you're out, gone. You're a bar chart trader, you are holding the bag right now, wondering why this thing just pulled back 20 points, right? My whole career, it's been all about volume, right? That's why I gravitated the minute I saw book map, I knew I was back, right? Because it's, it shows volume in a way that makes sense to me or makes sense to anybody even when you learn to read it right and then when you add in what the the big money's doing what the dumb money's doing what should happen what's not happening when it should things like that based on the si indicator you're on a whole different level you're in the top one percent of all traders in the world would be my call and i'm not exaggerating all right so we'll keep an eye on this this was uh again i'm not the other thing I talk about in my course, so I have set thresholds for all these futures products. I think I have over 21 products on there, or 22. Yes, you have thresholds that are valid 80% of the time, but there's certain days that you don't want to be taking. You know, for instance, I have uh, thresholds of 100 uh, for ICE and NQ and 120 for stop runs, right? A lot of the day, if you keep seeing, you know, Today is not that egregious. Like yesterday, all it was was over two. It was like 180, 200, 180, 200. You don't want to be using 100 as your threshold for that day. You have to use a little common sense, right? Everything's just not plug and play where you're like, oh, these thresholds are nonsense. This isn't working. It's not working because the day is just a higher volume day. So what you do is you scrunch your chart and you take a look. What are the biggest ones today? 218, 180, 191. That's about it on the buy side. Here's another one. one this is 117, I think, 124. So I, 100 is not enough today, but I don't think you need to go over 200. I think 150 is a good good volume to see either on stop runs. So you got 174, that was the biggest of the day here, and then you had 200 and here. stops. All right, so again, you could have covered that. Now there's new thing. Now I will get long here if this can hold. So this is actually a bearish, my one of my setups, but this is bearish. What is this? This is a double whammy. What's a double whammy? It's a dumb money stop running in the waiting hands of ice, of sell ice. So it doesn't mean it's, you've got to let this thing um, develop, but on the, on the face of things right now, this is a bearish setup. So if you were long, there's another reason to get out. If this breaks, breaks above, which it is, it's a failed, setup now you can go long on a retest failure right so let's watch this so again paper's not always right right but the point is the area is important yeah the stop run that's this now it's holding i want to see if this comes back here and holds and rips back out i'm going to get long 
it's like a whoops I didn't mean to do that that's like a reverse um it's opposite of the double whammy but it's it's a failed double whammy right it is what it is the thing should should have held and, and done what the first stop run did right that we just saw the dumb and dumber where it failed right this one hopefully we get a pull back into the zone and i can go along this as well again I, i'm bullish this market because of the fail breakout right there we go Get this off of here so i'm gonna hopefully if i start seeing i want this to come in here a little bit hopefully it will if not if it starts to run away i'm gonna get long and my stock goes below the zone i'm only risking 10 points which is like a sneeze in the nasdaq right all right i'm long there stock goes down here you can actually even put the stop below the first stop run if you want to do to give yourself a little more room but i'll go i'm gonna go just below here right below this this is where this all started again paper tried to stop it and it ripped right through came back retest failure gone where we're we going we're probably going right to this liquidity we'll see again i'm risking what 12 points to make a potential 30, right? That's what you want. That's almost three to one on your money. If you take enough of these guys, you can be wrong 60% of the time and still make money. That's the point, right? So keep an eye on that. I don't even know. It's, uh, oh, I'm ready. That's been rolling. That was very quiet move up. That sucks too, because I would have added to that. <clears throat> if anything new came in, but nothing did. But now I have dueling positions on. This was almost a stop hold, stop run threshold right here. You know, I look for 500. That's my. Um... So what I'm going to do here, because this is close enough, right? And now I have multiple positions on two. I'm going to use this as my threshold because it's close enough. Again, you haven't seen a ton of big stop runs today. That was there. About there. Right. I'm gonna now I'm gonna trail my stop up below here that I, of my last four. Right. Because I want to see this continue to go higher or I'm out for the time being. Right. Again, I'm letting the volume tell me that. What am I doing here? All right. So let's uh, I'm gonna stop out a little bit below that zone. All right. Again, if it doesn't come and it just keeps going and I get a new bullish signal, I will add to it. Cancel this. I'm doing very well canceling my arresting orders. I never do that. And then I'll I'll be sitting here an hour later and something will fire off. I'm like, what? What did I just do? Any questions, Bruce? Yeah. Um a few longer uh or, or earlier questions here. Um let's see. Uh hold on, let me get to it. Well, one one is about um uh, rollover um, and how you trade rollover uh, periods. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta. Obviously, the volume starts to switch. So you gotta keep an eye on it. I'm pretty sure we're, we're probably pretty close, right? So you gotta, you gotta go to the CME website and just keep an eye on. It. I mean, there's no like, it's no scientific thing. If the, the volume starts to separate, it, it gets probably it gets harder. I don't, I hate rollover. You know, luckily it only happens three times a year. I mean, four times a year. Um, but, you know, I don't really know what to tell you there. You just got to kind of, you can cut your size, cut your size down based on, I mean, so let, let's just take a look at the, I hate this new website, by the way. It's so hard to find the quotes. Let's take a look at this real quick. If I can, there we go. All right, quotes. <clears throat> All right, so it's still, it's still more than two and a half to one, or I'm sorry, uh, three and a half to one, right? still in March. So, you know, keep an eye on this as we start to get closer and closer when, you know, if it starts to get split, my recommendation is just have both, both products up, right? So have, have both months up. Ice. So you want to, you'll have the, you'll have the H and the M and just keep an eye on them and you can kind of combine them, right? So you'll see stop runs in one and stop runs in another and they add up to more than the threshold. It's a trade, right? I mean, I know that's not scientific, but it is what it is. I hate the role, but you just got to deal with it. You know, if you're just watching June, at that point, once this goes over 50% more for June, so you know if it's spread out, there's been 900,000 traded. You, you see, you know, 500 in June and and 400 in March. You know, you just gotta play your thresholds, maybe bring them down a little bit, um, you know, based on the buy. 
that's all I can tell you. I know that sounds scientific, but it is what it is. You know, I, I hate the role. Yeah, it's a tough, tough period. Um, uh, a lot of the strategies just kind of break down because because of the condition of the role. Um, the um, uh, other question here is, uh, how would you trade one contract? One contract? Well, if you yeah, trade if one you contract, have a smaller, smaller account. Well, you, first of all, if you have a smaller account, you should 100% be trading the micro contracts because that's going to allow you to trade multiple contracts so you can, and it's going to teach you how to handle trading multiple contracts, right? So you can get out of a piece, let some run. If you're trading one micro, which some guys may be doing, um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you're trading one micro, you're probably better off just trading on a simulator because you know your your gains and losses aren't going to be that great anyway. Where you're better off trading on the simulator, learning how to trade multiple contracts, and then when you feel feel confident in that, then you can start trading like go right to trading two micros, right? So my point is, if you're trading just one full E mini ES, you need to go down to micros and trade eight, or you can trade ten, right? And, and then you can start splitting it up in, in quarters and things like that. Um, if that's too big for you, then go down to, you know, trade two micros. Again, if you're only trading one micro, you're probably better off trading on a simulator until you get the feel for what you're doing with these setups and piecing out, like kind of like I do. Um, but if you're just trading one micro, then there's not much I can tell you. You just got to just get out. <laughs> I mean, you know, the first, for instance, we would have struggled at that, that liquidity that we we're talking about here. And you just get out of the position and hope, hope you get another opportunity to get in. Right. But that's why you want to be trading multiples. So you have something on like I do. If this thing keeps going like it is, I still have a piece on. Right. Probably was a little too um, conservative getting out at that 40 level on that. When it came back up there, I, I was a little too uh, too quick to cover that right here. So I already got out of here when the runaway here. I was a little too quick. I, I should probably still have eight on. But, you know, it is what it is. Anything else, Bruce? Um, not really. Um, I think uh, you know, uh, please. I, I I think I answered a lot of you guys' questions, mostly about the um, kind of settings on the stop stop iceberg or the on chart uh, iceberg. Um, there there will be some changes um, to the colors and the sizes of the text and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, it's in the works. Uh, but um, yeah, I think I think you answered everything. Uh, and uh, again, uh, guys, I'm putting uh, Scott's contact information um, in the uh, chat there, so you guys have that. And yeah, you guys can get the uh, we talk about it all the time, but the course you can get on the Bookmap Marketplace or my site, and then I do mentoring as well. You know, kind of help you guys help traders build playbooks and come up with setups, and you know, learn obviously how to do this stuff. And so I have that available too for traders that want it. <clears throat> Uh, but this is a good example here too, right? We were talking about if you miss the original trade so many times, it'll retest it. And then when it retests and you start to see the blue market buying come in, you get it. Stop goes to the same spot. I wonder where we're going. <clears throat> Anything else, Bruce? Um, no, there's um, no, that's pretty much answered, answered all the questions here. Okay. All right, um, so we've been on an hour, and you guys know my, I mean, it's, you know, you know my positions, they're I'm basically bullish everything now, um, but that was a good example of like how, you know, even though there are two equity markets, how they they look different at first, right? Like, so I, I decided just to go along the ES at the time, um, where's that, right? How we were saying how, you know, this one was breaking down at the time, and this one was just pulling back to its high volume level, right? Um, they ended up both being bullish, but I was not sold on NASDAQ until it could break, until it turned into a failed breakdown, right? Broke down, ripped through the high volume node. Now it's really bullish, right? Um, longer term, you want to pay attention. This is still a pretty big area for NASDAQ, right? So this is the high volume node of this, again, this is all fractal guys. It works on five minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. This was a balance area for trade. This was the high volume node. The zone was actually for just other stuff, but it just, it's not, not coincidental. It's right in the middle of this. Anyway, this is this is do or die time. This is just like the failed breakdown that we just looked in the five minute. 
if this, this could hold and turn over, if this gets a little bit above, then we're going here, right? Because it was what? It's going to be a failed breakdown. But there's more that happened since then, even more bullish. We built another balance here. Built balance, broke out, built more balance on top of it, gapped up higher. So you had all, you have all this bullishness on top of we're about to bust the high volume note of this one. Straight up, in my opinion. So again, shockingly, we're just inching up to the liquidity. It's just guys that's why that's why i retreated retweeted that post today on twitter like that is so important at the beginning of the morning it's not always so clear cut don't get me wrong right but at the beginning of the morning you want to you want to take a look at these markets and be like okay where's all liquidity oh look look above an es i mean this is down when the thing was trading in the 20s right you're like okay based on everything else that we talked about market profile the, the structure blah 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 then you also know all the big money's waiting up here waiting for their fills up there that just gives you hey i'm my thesis today is long. I'm only taking longs. And then, behold, what do we do? Right up there. Okay. Any other questions, Bruce? Anything else? Uh, no, no, no. That that's it. Uh, Steve, I I was just answering the question here, but yeah, this is what Scott does every Thursday. Okay, uh, live trading like this it is in demo paper trading mode, just so you guys know. Uh, and then uh, uh, J Traders on Wednesdays, and then three days a week, uh, Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays, I do the live analysis. It's all forward-looking. Okay, this is not hindsight education, um, and um, you know that's a, a, a real nice thing. So you guys can learn and 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 uh, apply what what you've learned uh, directly uh, in, in the markets. Right. Yeah, that's the point. So you know, this I, I trade on here for you guys in demo mode, but I'm taking the same trades on my accounts as well. Right. But you know, for compliance stuff, it's, you know, it just for the CFTC, everything else, this is what you need to be showing it this way. And again, the point is not to be mere, putting on trades exactly where I'm putting on trades, it's to learn what I'm looking at and why I'm doing the things I'm doing and how to use this incredible software, the book map and the SI indicator. That's the point of these webinars, right? So hopefully, you know, if you guys have been on enough, you're starting to really see this stuff is just magical. Again, it's the most powerful thing. It's not magic. It's the most powerful thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, I, 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 that's all I put every time I tweet something on Twitter. It's the incredible SI indicator, the incredible SI indicator. You know, this isn't like a, you know, it's not a plug just because, you know, I love Bookmap. It's because it works. I mean, you guys watch it. It's, this is, again, all my setups are based on how I used to trade as a large trader. I know how I would react if I got run over. I know how I would react if it worked in my favor. I, I, and back then again, like I say all the time, you can see counterparties. So I can see exactly who I was trading with. I can see exactly how much they can put on. A after after a while, you can see every house. You knew who the locals were, meaning guys like me that you know trade every day. You knew where the, who, where the big money was. That the, these number, they, they, all the houses are numbered, right? So, um, like what, if a Merrill Lynch would come in, you never see that. I forgot what they they were. Um, it wasn't seven one four, but whatever it was. If you only see them once a week and all of a sudden you see thousand lots coming in from Merrill Lynch, you probably don't want to be standing in the way of that, right? So my point is I started to learn all the tendencies of the big money, of the locals, of everything else, you know, of the dumb money puking where you just see all these one lots. And that's what my course is based off of, my personal experience as a large trader trading volume, right? And that's that's it's not hypothetical stuff. It's what I used to do and what I used to see. And now it's applied to this, and you're able to see that now because of the SI indicator, most powerful thing I've ever seen in futures trading. Again, I say it all the time. When I got back into the business, by the way, look, look at this shocking development. We're going to hit this liquidity where I may piece out of something if we can't get through. But when I got back in the business, I was trading stocks. I, I say this every webinar. My first few webinars for Bookmap were on trading stocks because I, I was so jaded by, you know, I was a millionaire trading the mini S&P and it knocked me out of the game. So I wasn't real keen at going back there, right? The minute they introduced this SI indicator, it was it was, it was was a game changer. And I'm like, I'm going back to futures because this is the most powerful thing I've ever seen. So, I mean, I, I don't know how many more times I can tell you guys, if you don't have it, it, it will change your trading, period. Actually, there was a quote on the last webinar. 
because I, I kind of be I tend to be kind of a smart ass because I, I I take it personal when people rip on book app or anything else. So the guy I watched last week's webinar where I, I took a couple losses. I was aggressively getting short. Remember this, Bruce, where we ended up breaking. We, was, I think it was, no, it was February 22nd. You guys can go back and watch it. And I kept getting short very aggressively. And then and then when it came back, I was even showing my PL right before we go off. I'm like, guys, this is only the first quarter. This thing breaks. We're going, we're breaking 50 plus points is my guess. And it ended up happening. So anyway, there's a comment on that video. You can look at it. A guy's like, so what you're saying is I got a, I have better odds trading in Vegas than, than using this thing. And my 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 response was want to bet, <laughs> get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I in uh, Vegas, but the point is, it trust me, guys. This is it. This is not. This isn't hocus pocus. This is what you need for your trading. And any naysayers have no idea what they're talking about. Period. I'll go to my grave. Yeah, I'll, I'll go up against anybody that wants to trade. I'll trade. They could trade bar charts or whatever, whatever they're using, and I could use Bookmap even in a vacuum. I'll go against them head to head for we can make a real bet on it that's how that's how certain i am of this stuff working again this isn't only a couple months i've been using this now for over a year my course has been out for like seven months right and it still holds true to this day to a t as you can see right doesn't mean you're going to win every day right every day is not a trend day but this is the day that again like i said you want to kind of lose a little, make a little, lose a little, make a little. And then finally, when you get this trending market and you keep getting signals, you keep adding, keep adding, keep adding, and then you have a year making day. Uh, Scott, this is, I, I, I kind of um, uh, gave Steve the wrong answer here, but uh, in your we trade desk room, this is the same kind of thing you do here, right? Yeah, so I do that, yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm in there, uh, 6.15 or 8.15 Eastern and 11.30 Eastern, I come on for about half hour, 45 minutes, and I do the exact same thing, right? And then you got guys in there too. It's a good it's a good resource too, um, a good community, because in my room, it's called the order floor room, and guys are, are alerting to different markets for book map, you know, hey, take a look at gold. There was just a big, big buy iceberg, or take a look at wheat. So it's good if you're not looking at things or you miss something and you know you got guy you got a community that's helping you with that too. So yeah, I'm in there. And then also guys for the TAS stuff, if you want, um, you know, if you like that TAS stuff, and again, that's what I use exclusively with Bookmap um, with the market profile stuff too. Uh, you can get the discounts on my website. Just click on the TAS banner for the uh, discounts um, as well as Bookmap, you get discounts too. But most everyone on here already has Bookmap. So, but if you want the TAS stuff, uh, you get, I think it's 20% off of the stuff in there, including the uh, trade room, so. Okay, and uh, just uh, a few more things, and then Chuck, uh, wow, he's just putting in right now that the, looks like the Russell SPX is all-time highs, NYM. Like, uh, yeah, I really wish I would have got some more big, uh, signals. Big, Actually, this was a signal, I missed it. Big, big day today. Um, uh, Jordan, um, it's really not so cut and dry. I know you're new in here, no problem. Uh, that's what this education is all about. It's about understanding the context though of the liquidity and think of it this way. Um, if you go to an auction, uh, you know, you're starting to understand the buyers or sellers in that auction. It's the same thing here. Uh, this is not some sort of mathematical, you know, arithmetic problem. Um, this is, um, you know, understanding kind of auction theory. Uh, so we go over this every day. Just keep, keep, uh, you know, watch the course and come to these webinars, ask questions, uh, and I'll, I'll go through it with you tomorrow, for example, if you if you want to go uh, over it in the webinar. Um, and uh, let's see um, other questions uh, here. So I may, yeah, before you read, I missed this was an ad right here, guys. So well, actually, a couple of ads, right? I should have added to the right here, which we were talking. I don't know why I got sidetracked here. It was close to threshold 445. I could have added on the break of this zone. And then you got another one right here. Here's this was definitely threshold 489, pretty right on top of it. You add on this one. So again, if I'm on top of this market, and this is kind of upsetting me that I wasn't for at least the second one, these are all ads, right? So I, I, again, I would have had three plus positions on here. So I would have added quickly on this zone here, that was this one. You add, stop goes here where it was, right? And then I would add it on that. These are all stop and hold setups. Stop and hold, stop and hold, stop goes down there. I would add it to this one. I may have gotten stopped out, but I would have gotten back in on that. Again, I give my trades two chances and then we catch, 
this is a year this is a month or year making day i should have you know again i missed two different entries here i should have three positions on right uh so you know, should have another 12 12 lots on and this is you know this this p l is monster this is what you want you wait you wait you wait tread water until you find the trending market days and you use this to add trail your stop so you can see i trailed my stop up now if this thing does rip down and i don't get another let's see what this is this isn't enough this is only 350. so if this does come down here right i'll be stopped out and i'll just wait for another long setup okay um ed uh reach out to support you said one of the links there for uh, getting a deal um uh for uh, I don't know, subscription, et cetera. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably based on the subscription that you have. That's why, I, I, I don't know, you can't upgrade. Um, reach out to support, they'll help you, okay? Uh, right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover, if this can't get up into this liquidity right now, again, like we talked about the Agos front run this liquidity, I'm gonna cover just a quarter, even though I, I'm almost 100% is gonna trade into this eventually. Um, you know, if this starts to run away again, I'm gonna get out of one quarter of this NASDAQ as well. Um, Go ahead, Bruce. Sorry, I was just wanted to. Oh, and uh, Alex, yeah, I mean, it looks like Scott trades all the time. I mean, the, uh, does he trade past the first two hours? Um, yeah, I trade all day. Yeah, most days when I'm not golfing. That is, that's why I moved to Arizona. <laughs> Four, forty-five uh, years, forty-five years in Chicago. That was, that was enough for me. Yeah, you, I, you, it's well deserved. Um, you put, put in your my time, time in. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, Thomas, yeah, this stop iceberg tracker in the sub chart there, it's configurable. There's many different things, um, you know, on the knowledge base, uh, there's a blog article, there's all sorts of kind of materials on uh, on oh, the settings look on at that. This. Wow, is it, this is a shocking development. We traded right into that big money, huh? Who knew? Oh, wait, we did. <laughs> Guys, this is, this is not like one off. This is what goes on all day, every day. If you can, you know, obviously it's not as easy as a trending market like it yesterday. But again, if you have the correct read of the, of the bigger picture, and then you, you know you get your setups and you take them and you know where the liquidity is, it's just, I mean, this is not a one-off. We talk about this all the time. This is why I retweeted that liquidity thing today on Twitter. It's like this is these are magnets for the market. Big money gets the market to go where they want it to go. That's why you want to know what they're trying to do. And here's a perfect example of me not getting out of this. Why? Why would I get out of this? Do you see any red? Do you see any struggling, anyone fighting back? I'm holding on to it. If this comes back below this, I'm gonna trail my stop up, then yeah, I'll get out of I'm gonna get out of a quarter right below it, but I'm giving this a chance to run now, right? Here, there's another quarter. I got out of a one quarter, of course, right before it ripped, but it looked like it was gonna be front run by the algos like it did these first couple of times. Now we punctured through here. This thing can just keep going. And I will add to this if I get new um, another setup. Yeah, uh, guys, this is recorded. Uh, in fact, Scott, um, if you like, I can put this on our YouTube channel uh, and make it available for all. Um, yeah, I would. This, this was obviously a good one. I mean, that, again, guys, it's not just because, you know, I have winning trades today. You know, you guys have seen me get smoked. One, one, one of the days I just got killed, you know, it's about learning it's about learning how to react to being killed the day i got killed you guys learned so much about you know um having a drop dead for the day you heard my ridiculous stories of losing eight hundred thousand dollars twice in the day a month apart because i didn't stop at my and my firm didn't stop me at losing a hundred thousand dollars so even when i have losing trades which i do right again it, this is nothing is a hundred percent trading nothing i don't care and if anyone tells you that it is you run the other way but even on days that aren't as easy as this, you guys are still going to be learning stuff, right? You're going to learn, hey, what did he do when he, you know, when he's on? And there's days I go on tilt as well, where, you know, where I can, I do much better nowadays of catching myself. Being on tilt means you're like losing it mentally, and then you're just starting to do stupid stuff. Where the next that that night you go over your trades and you look and you're like, what was I thinking, right? That's being on tilt, where you turn into a different person, right? Nowadays I can pretty much catch myself when I'm doing it, but trust me, in my younger days I could. My point is, in these webinars, you're seeing everything. You're seeing days that I'm not doing well. How do I react? What do I do? Do I do I stop at a certain point? And then days like this, you're seeing, hey, this is a day he's doing well. Is he adding? How is he? How is he adding? What's he looking at? So, you guys, this, this is such a great resource. I mean, you're getting my 20 plus year of experience on these webinars. You know, 
each and every one, basically. <clears throat> I forgot what the original question was, though. What was the question? Oh, if you want to put it on, yeah. So my point was, yeah, absolutely put this one on. Yeah, it's not definitely. because, you know, I have a bunch of winners today. It's because it's just great learning on how to react to liquidity, how to, re how to add to a position, what you look for, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I definitely will put this on as the general public one. All right. Sounds great. Um, uh, I think we, we answered everything, Scott, and I know it's um, you've been going like uh, almost an hour and a half here. Um, let, let's wrap it up, everybody, and, and then um, we'll uh, uh, I'll put this on YouTube. So uh, look look for it at under it'll be under um, uh, selected webinars. OK, so that that's where you'll find it. Uh, give me it's going to take a while. It's going to you know look for it in the afternoon. Uh, today, East Coast time, uh, but it will be up there. All right, guys. Well, um, hopefully you learned stuff today, especially like watching the VIX. You can see it just keeps making lows. That's what you want in a trending market um, and everything else. You know, again, it's not trading the stuff in a vacuum. It is getting, even if you don't look at the stuff the way I look at it, you still have the stuff you're, you're using. You still have an idea like, hey, I'm bullish today. I'm bearish, right? The main things you take away from this is, try to come up with a thesis for the day and you're not worrying about missing trades going both ways you come up with an idea you trade that way if it materializes you jump on it if it doesn't you're not mad that you missed a sell-off because you're you're bullish right it, it, markets are going to trade both ways the, the best advice i can give you is to come up and get better at figuring out what's going on in the big picture and then using this incredible volume indicator and incredible software to help confirm your ideas and then help you manage your trades and know where you're wrong, know where you're right. That's the whole idea. All right. Well, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, excellent advice there. Um, uh, yeah, got, got to all your questions, guys. You can always reach out to Scott. I put all the contact information in the chat there. Um, so uh, if you're interested in, in, in reaching out to him, et cetera. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll 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 call it a day. Uh, thank thanks, Scott, and uh, we'll catch up uh, with you next Thursday. All right, great. Yeah, so I'm basically, you know, I'm in these trades still. I'm going to hold on to them unless you know I'll stop out of this one. But if I see something, um, you know, bearish, I will get out of my full position. I'm not going short based on everything we've talked about, but I will just wait for another setup. And trust me, you will get another setup. So just be patient, get out, and wait and be the sniper. We say it all the time. Be like a sniper waiting for your target. No, you're not in there spraying bullets everywhere. Not nice. You're waiting for your uh, you're waiting for your shots. So you can hear the Dow going off too. That's usually signaling a bigger move is coming. So whether this is going to rip higher or lower, be ready. All right, Bruce, thanks for having me. Um, I will see you guys next Thursday. Okay, thanks, Scott. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>